how many things you've had to take into consideration to build a facility like this? Not only just testing the machines, but <laughs> safely blowing the place up. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome along to what you might call my happy place. So I am at the Cummings plant in, uh, in Darlington and we are here to check out a brand new facility that they have built which is a, uh, it's a powertrain test facility yes, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Which sounds like a really simple title but it's pretty cool what it can do. So the person responsible for pretty much building this new development behind us is Emma Laidlet. So Hi. Emma We'll dive in, take us on a tour of this new okay. powertrain test facility, which we can see behind us here, which from the outset, it's a big black box, but it has got some very it's, cool features on the inside. It's clever inside, it yeah. Very, very clever. Cool. So here we are outside the powertrain test facility. We're stood in front of test chamber 21, which is a uh, fully kitted out uh, test chamber, which is cap it's fuel agnostic. It's capable of testing a wide range of vehicles and elements of the powertrain. Within the facility, we have a hydrogen concept truck that is connected to four heavy duty dynos. Each of these dynos has a two speed gearbox and they are capable of doing up to 60,000 Newton meters a piece. Right, so they could handle you know, whatever machine it is you put on this test rig. Yes. So they'll we, handle 60,000 newton meters on each corner, basically. Yeah, direct to the hub. Right. Um, we are capable in here, we've designed the facility so that we can deal with a wide range of vehicles. That's anything from SUV size, uh, right the way up to double deck buses. Right. Um, and between that, um, heavy duty trucks and of course, agricultural vehicles. So we have uh, flexibility in the types of vehicles we can test, but we also have made this uh, facility f uh, capable of fuel agnostic testing. By that, I mean we can test diesel, uh, vehicles as well as electric, CNG mm. and hydrogen. So, pretty wide scope of mm -hmm. applications in here. So, first question then, why, why did you do it? Because I've already seen your pilot centre where you've got mm -hmm. all those multiple test cells for testing various engines mm -hmm. and whatnot. So why did you guys need this at Darlington? So, for looking at from um, a regulation point of view and also the needs of our customers from a, a future facing perspective. There was a, definitely a need to move towards uh, vehicle and powertrain testing um, and showing that we, we keep up with the, the ever needing changes in the world in terms of sustainability but also the need to have better real world uh, driving mm. uh, testing. Um, so this facility allows us, rather than just testing an engine, allows us to test a full vehicle um, or elements of a powertrain. Um, and of course, from a fuel perspective, we're also thinking ahead in terms of um, lower carbon emissions and looking at what alternative fuels are out there. So not just clean diesel, uh, but alternative fuels such as CND and hydrogen. So you mentioned you can test hydrogen powered vehicles in here, uh -huh. which I assume brings with it, well, a number of challenges, you yes. might say. So. I, th I think in terms of the history of the, des you know, this, this facility is four years in the making from concept uh, through des feasibility, design, build, commissioning and becoming operational. Um, a lot of the challenges um, faced around the design is thinking about how we can make this building safe for testing hydrogen vehicles. Hydrogen is very flammable, uh, very explosive, um, and therefore we've had to base, uh, consider that when thinking about the facility and protecting our people mm -hmm. and the assets that we have in here. Um, we've looked at it from, from a Desire ATEX point of view. Um, there are three, uh, from the perspective of primary, secondary and tertiary protection. So from a primary perspective, you're trying to minimise the chance of an explosive atmosphere even occurring. Yeah. So if you can stop um, the gas accumulating and therefore becoming a potential explosion, that is the best thing you can do. Yeah. Um, so if you look in this facility, if you look at a high level, there is uh, ventilation equipment 
the ventilation equipment helps us stimulate driving conditions on the road, but from a hydrogen safety point of view, this is critical in terms of ensuring um, replacement of air. Um, the ventilation equipment at the far end brings the air in, the air is forced down across the vehicle and then exits the chamber directly above me through that ventilation system there. The, the, um, the ventilation system that we have uh, is capable of 65 air exchanges an hour. So that oh, means right. every minute yeah. in this uh, chamber, the air is replaced. So that means that, that gives us advantage from a hydrogen safety point of view from two perspectives. One, you're not allowed, in, if there was the worst case scenario and a leak occurred from the fuel system, you're, you're minimizing the chance of that gas accumulating yeah, into a cloud. And it also gives a lot of turbulence as well. So mm. in terms of it, the turbulence atmosphere means that that cloud that could create an explosion is, is hopefully minimised. So it's kind of dissipated sort of thing. That's right. right. Uh, from a secondary level, of course, if it does release, it's detecting it and making sure that we, we don't have any sparks or things that could set yeah. off um, an explosion. Uh, so we have ATEC zones at a high level um, and all equipped because obviously hydrogen rises. So anything within that is EX rated for hydrogen. We have hydrogen sensors scattered across the roof of the chamber. Um, so if a hydrogen obviously is very light, it rises and yeah. it will be detected up there. But what we will also do from an operational point of view, we have mobile hydrogen sensors that will be positioned close to the fuel system. Oh, so right. the quicker so you, you detect it, right. the quicker we can put our safety systems and shut things down, yeah. close off um, the, the release. Um, the other thing is in terms of before the vehicle even comes in, from an operational point of view, we do a fuel, um, we do leak checks yeah. on the vehicle. Then uh, for the, the tertiary level, that final le level of protection and the design that's gone into this building is if the worst was to happen, if we did see an explosion, how do we protect our people mm. um, as the primary concern and how do we protect the asset that is the powertrain test facility? So if you look at the test chamber, uh, the back wall and the side wall here, which is obviously into the control room, mm. where our people would be controlled. So on the other side of that, you've got your control, control room, room, which we'll have a look at shortly. Well, shortly. That is a blast wall. So right. we, we've had a full CFD, we've had CFD uh, models done to simulate different vehicles, different credible hydrogen releases. And from that simulated what an explosion or what explosions could look like and what's the worst case scenario in terms of pressure waves mm. um, and you know, at the scale of yeah. the hydrogen explosion. That wall is designed to withstand the blast so it would protect our people within right. the control room. So that would withstand a blast and not break either? Yes, that's right. right. Yeah, so it's designed to the highest level. You can have different, um, from a, a, an insurance or risk point of view, you can design that wall to different levels. Um, we've got it at the highest grade where yeah. it would, you know, there'd be superficial damage, but it would stand, it would survive the explosion and yeah. stay Whereas put. at lower levels, lower grades of concrete walls, they could withstand the explosion but they break and it needs replacing exactly and yeah. then you've got somewhere in between yeah. then you've got your level it's like a bunker i think that's the yeah. you th imagine that the control room is a bunker and we right. can see from like the thickness of the doors when you go in as well that everything is is blast rated what we've also got um at the front um section uh, the front face of the building we have uh, vents uh, vented panels so this this would then channel any uh, pressure from that explosion out the front of the building um, and you can see that these panels are tethered right. to the structure so of the building. So this is worst case scenario this is worst this, case at this point. So if that explosion happened that pressure wave that fireball would exit through the front of the building. Blow these panels Blow out these which panels. are from pretty much from floor to floor to ceiling, floor to ceiling. Full all space. across the front. Yeah of the and even the vehicle door has got Oh, the door's on got it, it in as well. well. Yeah. And the key thing here is obviously you don't want those panels becoming projectiles and no. causing more damage. I was going to say, you could pepper the whole of Darlington, couldn't you? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is where um, these tethers uh, come in. They um, ensure that those panels, um, they would release, they release at 6 psi, but then they, they stay with the building. Right. And so it's quite a low pressure that they will release that yeah, to get it, it out is. of there as quickly as yeah. possible. And that's a fine balance in terms of design that building from you know, like an everyday point of view with wind speeds on the outside. Yeah. You do, you, they've, well, got to, they've got to stay there, but they've got to be able to release. It's absolutely crazy, isn't it? Because like, from your point of view, you know, you've been looking after this project 
mm. you know, from For start to finish. How many things you've had to take into consideration to build mm. a facility like this? Not only just testing machines, but <laughs> safely blowing the place up. Yeah.